Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Now today, as you can tell by the title probably, we have got a challenge on our hands. And it's probably one of the hardest challenges I'm gonna give myself really. And it's to try and catch as many species of fish as I can do in one session. And the session is actually very, very short. I'm only fishing for about four hours today. Um, because of that, I'm probably not gonna be traveling very far. I need to keep it local. It's four hours from when I left the house to basically when I finished. So I probably lost a bit of time already. I can fish whatever methods I want to. Uh, as long as it's rod and line so i've got two setups with me uh, one of them for like stalking fish and ledger fishing and then the other one obviously for law fishing pike and perch and chub so that's what i'm going to do i need to crack on now because i haven't got long left already but yeah essentially four hours to catch as many species of fish as i can i'm hoping to get the magical like 10 mark i'd love to be able to catch 10 species of fish in this short amount of time only fishing local canal local river maybe local ponds i'm not sure let's crack on i'm losing time right let's go Now I had only bought two setups for me for this session because we we're going to be traveling a lot. I brought my trusty Akuma Custom Black feeder that I use for all different kinds of fishing and today it will be used for free lining, for maybe a bit of ledger fishing and maybe even some float fishing. And then for the predator side of things today, I have my trusty Akuma Psycho Perch spinning rod, 2 to 12 gram. Perfect for chucking the light laws for the perch and possibly for jack pike too and maybe even chub and possibly trout if I need to as well. Paired up with the Helios SX loaded with 12 pound braid. All right, so the first fish I'm looking for is actually probably the hardest one of the, there's a pike right there. I don't know about that, but let's go for it. Oh yeah, come on. Go on. Go on. Whoa, what a hit on the top water. Yes, yes. It absolutely crushed it. The bait is gone, I can't even see it. I think it's on a little uh, pencil, walk the dog style bait. Good you've got a wire trace on here. It's not a bad pike either, really. I was walking along talking to the camera about my game plan for the canal and what species I was hoping to catch and a pike just appeared in front of me. I had a cast out for it. Bang! <laughs> this setup is so nice to play this pike on. It's a lighter setup for the perch and pike and when you hook a pike on it, they feel absolutely incredible. And this one's popped such a good fight. We've got it. Species ticked off. How easy was that? Not a bad size one either. Let's look at where the bait is. Look at that. That's how well he took that bait. Right, let's give him a rest and get him unhooked. What an awesome catch. I was literally just talking to the camera about what species I was planning on targeting from the canal. This pike came cruising past. It didn't take much persuading. Just chucked out the, I think it's called a Precision Pencil Extreme. It's a little sort of walk the dog style topwater bait. I'll get him back quickly and then I'll tell you exactly how I was working that bait to be able to get this pike. What a fantastic fish though. I really wanted to go. Oh, so let me tell you just how I finessed that pike. Now as you'd have seen there, the moment I cast out with that top water bait, nothing happened. The pike didn't move at all, um, didn't react to it. I'd cast directly in front of it and it just wasn't that bothered. Now the good thing about this bait is when it sits in the water, the back end of its body sits below the surface and just the tip of the head sits above the surface. So I cast out in front of that pike and just very, very gently twitched the bait on the surface, almost made it vibrate looking like potentially a dying fish, maybe trying to get to the surface. And as you could see there, it worked. Bang, that pike absolutely smashed it and hit it so hard that the bait was right down the back of its throat almost. I had to unhook it through the gill plate. That's how hard it nailed it. Um, absolutely wicked. Time to move on now. Like I was gonna say, um, the fish I was targeting from the canal was gonna be the tench. 
it's going to be the hardest fish to catch this session easily because we've had such low temperatures recently potentially one of the first fish to get affected by low temperatures um, and then I was going to move on to the easier areas like the river for the barbel so anyway I've got pike ticked off the list let's try for tench and probably perch at the same time and then we'll probably start heading out for some more species like rud, roach, barbel, chub, you name it I've got loads and loads of species to try and catch I've got to hurry up let's go Right, so I found some lovely perch in this spot. Problem is, they was all asleep when I got here. And I sent the lure out a few times right in front of the faces, twitched it along the bottom right in front of them, and uh, they weren't interested. So I decided it's time to go out there with a worm. I didn't really want to do that when it comes to the perch and pike, but big perch, they deserve a nice big juicy worm if they're not really hungry for anything else. The rudder are demolishing my hook bait, get off. We've hooked one. Well, we needed a rudd, so I guess that's a species counted. <laughs> but I really wanted a big pitch. Oh, sorry Mr. Rudd, didn't mean to do that. Come on, come on, yes, yes, yes. Got another chance. We got it that time, we got it that time. That is a cracking perch. I couldn't have got it on uh, one of the hard baits I've got. But it doesn't matter. In this competition, it can be baits, can be artificials. Makes no difference. They all count, and that is a cracking perch. <laughs> He's in the net as well. <laughs> it's a beautiful fish. Easily well over 40 centimetres, anyway. That's probably a fish of about 43, 44 centimetre. It's been attacked by something, possibly a big pike. Big mark in his back, look. But that is a really long fish. Like I said, that's probably about 43, 44. Now it's a competition where size doesn't really matter, but I was hoping for some big fish. And I'm absolutely over the moon with that. I couldn't get him to move for the law. They was all asleep. And the moment I decided to change over to worm, they'd all disappeared. Obviously woken up, I think a pike woke him up. What a fantastic perch to count for the perch point though. And I've wasted a lot of time chasing bigger fish. So let's crack on and hopefully get a few more on the bank. So I was walking along to go to the river and um, try for some barbel or something, some different species. And I've gone and spotted a perch shell, which was the one I saw earlier which I caught that perch in and I cannot turn down another go at a big perch can I really oh there we go that's a nice perch it's a lovely perch don't know if he took it or not he didn't no he did hopefully he's not deep hooked whoa a pike Ooh. no 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 get here perch get here 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 no 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 leave him alone leave him alone leave him alone we got it and the pike <laughs> how often does that happen <laughs> uh, snuck him into the net <laughs> while he was chasing the perch let's have a look Lovely pike, I've already caught one now. That's funny. <laughs> he was trying to eat this guy. And this is bigger than the last perch I caught. Ouch. Thankfully, I only just hooked in the corner of the mouth. I'll let him take it because I didn't realise he'd actually taken the bait. There we go. At two pounds, six ounce, it was a fantastic canal perch. And I almost managed to scoop up a little friend with him too. 
but it was time to move on now i couldn't get held up just targeting the shoal of big perch that's not what this session's about it's about catching different species and now it was time to move on and find some more now before i'd even properly started the session as i was walking along the canal i did throw a load of four mil halibut pellets into a swim in the hope of coming back to it later on to maybe find some bigger species like the tench or bream and it was time to go and see if any fish had started feeding Guys, I was taking my maggot box out of my bag and the lid fell off while it was inside my bag while well, I was pulling it out and I've now got a rucksack full of maggots. Now, anyway, this swim earlier, when I was walking past, I put in a few handfuls of pellets because I've seen some bream here. And when I've come past on the way back, it's all coloured up and I can see some tails. So before we go to the river, we're going to give it a go for the bream just here. And hopefully we'll be able to sneak one out. Got one. We have got one. God, that's a good size one too. Yeah, it's another species. And it took a long time to catch it. It took longer to catch this bream than I bet it will do for me to catch a barbell. Let's put it that way. I did use up quite a chunk of time though trying to catch these. You'd have thought bream would have been quite easy, wouldn't you? But they're actually quite tricky on the canal. And that's a really, really beefy one. That's a good sized bream. Might weigh this one. Hook right in the corner. Only a small size 12 or 14 even. That's a heavy bream. I might make a weight on that one. Now guys, would you believe it? This bream is six pound 11 ounce. And that is a brand new personal best for me. An absolutely huge bream for the local canal. A fish of nearly seven pound. Absolutely awesome stuff. But now it was time to move on to a new venue, time to go to the river to see if we can find any new species of fish there to add to my total. One of the best feeds for barbell ever in the world ever. Four more halibut. Right, I'm about to make a cast. Got some of the sauce durable hookers, eight mil. That's what I'm just gonna be putting straight on the hook. I don't want to funny around. I don't want to be wasting time um, setting up properly. So I've just got a uh, single SSG shot up the line. Size 10 hook down the bottom. Because these are obviously soft hookable pellets. We'll just hook one straight on and we shouldn't have a problem. I'm hoping I'll get one. Well, I've, I've already bragged that I can get one within 10 minutes and hopefully I can do that. We got one, we got one, we got one. Did I do it within 10 minutes though? Come on. Oh, 11 minutes 30. Damn it, I said I wanted a barbell within 10 minutes. And it was 11 and a half minutes. <laughs> Can't complain about that really, can I? Bit longer than I expected, but as long as we land it, that's the main thing. So after we catch this, we can move on then. I ain't got long left, maybe an hour. And I at least wanted to catch five more species than what I've actually caught. Although it's gone into a snag, which isn't very nice of it. Please let me catch this fish. Damn it, we're gonna have to do that trick where you let some line out, make the fish think that you've not hooked him anymore. And then they like swim back out from the snags. Bugger, I was going to bring my waders today as well. If I had my waders on, I could have just jumped in and netted that fish easy. He's underneath a big sort of like weed and stick clump. There we go. See, that trick works. More often than not, actually. 
just allowing them some slack line just to come out especially on the river because in the river they'll naturally move downstream with the current when you do that and that will often pull them out the back end of the snags especially this one he is a decent size actually because he is slightly bigger than i thought he was when i first hooked him probably about seven pound Oh, we swam into the net. That was lucky. And there we go. It's another species to the list. I've not been counting them, but I'm going to have to do a tally soon. I'll get the mat set up and take a good look at this one. Well, I said to you guys, barbel is so easy. I can get one in 10 minutes. Well, that was a lie. It actually took me 11 minutes <laughs> to land this fish. And it's absolutely beautiful too. Probably about seven or eight pound. Probably getting on for eight. Awesome fish, just free line pellet right under my feet. One of those sauce 8mm soft hookers. Dropped it down over a bed of marine halibut pellets and it took 11 minutes for this barbel to come and pick it up. I've only got probably less than an hour, maybe 45 minutes left of my challenge. And I've got loads more species left to catch. So we're going to get this one well rested, get my stuff packed up and get moved on because we've got a few more species to catch yet. So with the barbel ticked off, that only gave me less than half an hour to catch as many species as I could do before the time ran out. On the way to my next spots I was planning on fishing, I did spot a couple of chub and I decided I couldn't turn them down. I gave a go with the lure at first, they wasn't interested, so I decided to use some bread. It's probably a bit of a cheap method when it comes to chub. There's not many chub that will turn down a bread flake and it didn't take long before I got some action. There's a chub right there. Come on, I've had two of them take bread now and not actually take the hook. There we go, didn't take too long. Only a small one. It's not a very big one, but it's bigger than the one I caught on the canal, which I didn't really want to count for the chub point because it was literally about an ounce. This one, on the other hand, is about two pounds. Maybe a bit bigger, maybe about three pounds. Right on the top lip, just in a floating bit of bread. I haven't got much time left, so we're not going to take a close look at this one. It's probably about two and a half to three pounds. Just let him go quickly, just spat out some bread, look. That's another species ticked off. We've got about half an hour left. I'm just going to go and try and get as many small, like mini species as I can from an area further up the river. Now the chub may have only been small, around about two pounds, but it ticked it off my list. And now it was time to get the last few species. At this point, I'd got maybe 15, 20 minutes left of fishing and it was time to go for some micro species. So I headed to an area of the river which was very, very shallow and it was where a lot of the small fish, a lot of the fry are um, away from the predators in the shallow water. And it was time to get a few more species ticked off for the last part of the session. Now I targeted this particular shoal of fish because I could see there was lots of different species in amongst the same shoal. But there was a theme. Every single time I put out a single maggot into the shoal of fish, it was the small chub, the small chublets that took the bait every single time. And I got maybe five or six small chublets before eventually a pike turned up. And even though my time was running out, I could not turn down the chance of getting a pike on a little jerk bait in the shallow water. I was trying to get some mini species and a pike just turned up. I was smashing into all the little bait fish I was trying to catch. There it is. There we go, what a, what a hit. That didn't take very long. Instantly, a little jerk bait, passed out. Just choked it too. I think that was a shadow wrap. These pike must be hungry today, look at that. Absolutely choked it. With the way this pike took it and the way that first pike took it, I think I should have been out on a predator session today. They were absolutely nailing it. That, that small shadow wrap was right down that pike's gullet. Just like that walk the dog style bait earlier on in the session, absolutely destroyed it. I decided after that I released that fish, maybe to have a few more casts to see if there was any perch about. And lo and behold, bang, there was. Underneath the archway, a cracking perch came out and nailed the shadow wrap as well. 
At this point, I was really running out of time. I couldn't be distracted anymore. So I decided just to hit this little shoal of fish and hope that maybe a couple of species that I wanted were hiding in amongst him. I did manage one fish that I was completely unsure about. I'm pretty sure it was a dace, which I need for the competition, but it could have been a baby chub just as well. I'll let you guys decide in the comment section below. Was it a dace or was it a small chub? And after I caught that dace, I did notice a few other species down there that I really wanted to catch. At this point, I'll need less than five minutes to go. So it's time to see if I can get one or two more species before the time runs out. Yeah, it's a new species, that's a new species. That's what I wanted, it's a good one. It's a frigging good end, yes. <laughs> and that makes it species number seven. The humble gudgeon, absolutely beautiful little fish. Kind of resemble a small barbel, don't they? Absolutely stunning little fish. And one of the ones I wanted to catch today. So I'm glad I did. See you later, buddy. So that was it, gudgeon caught and the time crunch was real. Only a few minutes to go. I had to run to the next spot where I think there was a chance of getting a different species. And then I only had one or two more minutes left of fishing before we had to leave and go and do the score run. Guys, I'm not lying to you right now. I literally have like two minutes left. Two minutes. I had about five minutes left when I caught that gudgeon. So I always had to put my shoes, socks on, quickly jump out of the river and rush upstream, see if I can get one more species. I'm currently at seven species. Let's see if I can get one more in the last two minutes. I can see some small species of fish over there. Loads of them in that slack water. Come on. It's a really tricky spot to cast into though. Come on, come on, come on. We got one, we got one. It's gotta be a new species. It's a minnow. It's a minnow. <laughs> we got a minnow. That's another species. Beautiful little minnow. Yes. <laughs> Normally I fished it. I would only consider as perch food, but today he was welcome. Oh, that's the alarm. We're done. That should be four hours or just over four hours, whatever I decided to give myself today. So we may not have ended the session on an absolute monster, but we did tick off another species right in the last minute. So now it's time to tally him up and see just how many species we managed to catch. So we had the pike, we had a rud, then we had some cracking perch, then we had a huge bream that was a new personal best, then we had the barbel, then we had the chub, then we had the gudgeon, then we had potentially a dace and a minnow, and I did actually, I didn't really include it in this video because it was so small, I wasn't even gonna count it. But I did have a roach earlier on, although I didn't show it, I fished for like a couple of minutes in an area. I had a dog wean on my stuff, so I decided to move. So that gives me 10 species caught in just four hours fishing, if the days counts. I'll let you guys decide if my days counted. What a fantastic session. Not only did I catch a new personal best bream, and at six pound 11 ounce, that's a huge fish for the canal. But I also had the moment where I had like a near two and a half pound perch go into the net and scoop up a pike at exactly the same time. And I caught a barbel basically almost within 10 minutes of casting out in one swim, which I predicted. So all in all, it was a fantastic session. Caught almost 10 species. This wasn't on a commercial venue. This wasn't on a stocked venue. It was between the Wild Canal and the Wild River. And to me, that's really, really cool. I've really enjoyed myself. If you want to check out the two setups that I've used today, um, as well as the baits and maybe even some of the laws that I've used, I'll link it all down in the description below for you guys to check out. If you want to subscribe, we've had fun and we're going to be having some more fun soon. I've got some really cool videos coming up for you guys, some informative ones too. And I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for watching.